Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 3 of my Kerbal Space Program Let's Play modded series. Um, back after all the derps of episode 2 and getting started and not really paying attention. So as you saw we had that satellite in orbit from the last episode but that's not going to come in handy for much longer. Um, so I'm now building Comsat 2 which is the second of four parts of this satellite communications network around Kerbin. So as you can see, similar setup, I've just, yeah, not worried about that other contract at the moment, so. One thing I did do this time was make sure I had a Kerbal aboard. And the problem was with the couplings on the first satellite, it, the coupling was still attached to the uh, engine on Comsat 1, so it was almost impossible to maneuver the thing. So here I'm making sure I have batteries to the, or a battery to the um, manned section of the probe and just add in a couple of flat panels, solar panels to the outside of it to keep it powered just so I have power whilst I re-entry. I don't know why I put them on there to be honest. They're just gonna get discarded. So just checking contracts and so on and so forth and finding out you know what I still need to do. Apologies for the quality of the video in these first few episodes. It takes me a while to get a good balance between uh, video quality and you know frame rate. So I'm just getting round to the KSCs in daytime, uh, just so that I have solar power right from the start. And also Comsat 1 is like a quarter of the planet behind-ish, so here we go, good bit of time lapse. So you can see I adjusted the uh, staging sequence to just get me up there now, I'm not too worried about that rocket boost contract at the moment. focused on the Comsat contract. And just doing gravity turn. Not the most efficient, but we will deal with that. So the full mod list for this pack is available in the description, uh, thanks to all mod makers of course, um, I'm trying to keep them all fully updated as possible. I have also added, which will be from episode 12 onwards, a couple of extra mods. So here we go, just waiting to circularize-ish the orbit. And this is the long burn, which uses the biggest part of the delta B, which is the, I think it's like <coughs> thrust divided by velocity, um, 
weight and I don't know some calculation it gives you the total amount of thrust you've got left basically in meters per second staging the main sequence off switching to the poodle not the poodle terrier engine so I have a reasonably circular orbit I'm looking at comsat 1 I'm gonna realize pretty shortly that comsat 1 is a dead stick basically it's useless but we'll get there so I'm just matching orbits at the moment actually I'm matching planes by the looks of it so I'm gonna drop down the plane to match the plane of comsat 1 which is a mistake in itself as we'll find out later So as we'll find out later, this is a complete waste of 500 uh, meters per second of delta V. There it goes. Now I'm looking to match the the orbit with Comsat one. Now this doesn't need to be too exact and you'll see why later on. It needs to be close-ish but it doesn't need to be too exact. burning up to the maneuver node and now circularizing it would have been easier to just hit circularize on this That all looks good. Yep, node execute. What I've done is I'm um, I'm just coming up in behind Comsat One, so I've made the orbit slightly bigger, so it falls eventually further and further behind. Comes at one because its orbital period is bigger. Not that any of this will matter by the end of the episode. There we go, burning to match orbits. And 
that's pretty much exactly the same. Although what I think I do do at this point is separate. So the man section come back. Go, just switch to the probe itself and now I'm going to use the yeah, I've got kill rotation on I'm going to use the couplings to separate away from the engine and then I'm just checking that last stage is that one so I hit it and away goes the couplings there we go back to the probe as it's going to stay Now, the coupling where I ejected from the uh, man section of my probe, when it fired away, obviously it ruined my orbit completely. So I now need to face retrograde, which I'm doing, and reduce my orbit back down again to match Comsat 1. And I think this is where I realised I need to be a bit bigger anyway, because I need to fall further behind. I do adjust the couplings thing in a future episode just to reduce the amount of ejection force so there isn't so much orbit deviation when I separate. Just finishing the burn, and we're close enough. So this is why I'm thinking, yeah, I'm a bit bigger here, so I can afford. So I'm trying to go back to the man section now, but I'm going to have to do it manually. Zoom in. There we go. Okay, so we're on the manual section now, and we're just going to do the re-entry whilst doing the science. So we're going to keep that experiment from the science junior. Close the doors. We are going to face orbital of a retrograde. Bring down our orbit into the atmosphere. I'm just facing a solar panel out so that our battery stays charged whilst we're getting around into position. Although we don't need a huge amount of battery for this, we just need enough to fire the parachutes basically. So firing retrograde, bringing down the periapsis until it gets down into the atmosphere. that and then we're going to time skip around until we're pretty close to the atmosphere and then burn off the rest of our fuel to reduce our orbital speed so we get a nice slow burn into the atmosphere I mean I could error break and not use the fuel in the tanks but I'm coming in anyway this fuel is going to be useless so I've got a heat shield, I'm gonna be fine. So I get down to around, let's have a look, where did I go to? 80,000 and I fire the engine on full power and just burn off the last of the fuel. Just to reduce that speed a bit. And make sure the periapsis is low enough that I don't just skip back out of the atmosphere. There we go, jets in the engine. They're still pointing orbital retrograde so that the heat shield's facing. I'll retract that, 
so that it doesn't get blown off by entering the atmosphere and it uses less power so we're in the dark landing yeah just watching my power levels there don't really fancy killing Jebedar off so just taking a crew report bringing it home and then we're just gonna speed up get through the early part of the atmosphere See the heat shield started to burn up now. So there's plenty of ablator on the heat shield, which protects us from the majority of the heat forces you see on monitor under there. But we're gonna have more than enough. Speed's coming down now with the drag in the atmosphere. Just what we want to see. Down to twenty five thousand meters. through the worst that they burn so the ablator doesn't really matter anymore so now we're just waiting to get down to I think it's 300 meters per second no it's 500 oh no it's 300 there we go cool so parachutes are, lot, are fired now so there's no point in waiting around just skip through time And we're gonna have a nice soft sea landing. Unfortunately, the parachutes are quite low down, so it flips it upside down. Can't turn it up the right way, but it doesn't really matter because, like I said, it's a sea landing. Splash down. Recover the vessel. And now we're going to skip back and look at fine tuning the distance between the comsats. So as you can see, if you go out of four, you want to have them reasonably equispaced around the you know the orbit that they're all on. So I know that I'm on a bigger orbit with Comsat 2. So I'm just gonna let it run a few orbits. Increase the distance between the satellites. takes a while because I didn't have a huge difference between them. See, I'm just checking out. I see it needs to be quite a bit further behind. Obviously, you don't have too much distance between them, otherwise, you'll just lose signal. It's getting pretty close now.
There we go. So now I'm going to switch back to Comsat 2 and fine tune the orbit so that, well, I'll explain as we go through. I'm just changing my periapsis up here to closely match ish to bring us in line with the other satellite. So, bringing the periapsis down. That's as close as I can get. and just skip it through to execute that manoeuvre. Kerbal alarm clock. So here we go. And it was a very small adjustment. So now the fine, 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 fine tuning part. <clears throat> uh, yeah. And this is where I realised that my orbits are still out of sync. And adjusting the orbital plane then screws with your periapsis apoapsis. And I'm just being finicky at this point because there are other ways to match the other orbit without actually matching it. It's, yeah. So anyway, this is my attempt at matching the orbit. Skip into the node. It's only 47 meters per second. But with the AND engine, it's, that's a reasonable burn, which means it'll be fairly accurate. So you can see the planes starting to match up. And there we go. So those orbits are matching visually, but when you look at the orbital periods, they are different. So you've got your target orbital period and your own orbital period. And just rename it Comsat 2 so we don't get confused. Not that this is going to matter in a bit. Um, so now it's a case of trying to match the orbital period. So in order to increase your orbital period, you need to prograde your orbit. I'm just looking at parameters that I got from something entering orbit of the sun and that was the coupling that fired off into the distance so it's all good science and money for firing off a coupling decoupler so comsat one I'm looking at 
now and I'm just going to change the name of it quickly. Where am I? Yeah, I'm going back to Comsat 2 to adjust my orbit. So thrust limiter right down and believe yeah so I need to face orbital prograde because I need to increase the length of my orbital period now and I'm just gonna fire it on a really low level just to bring that orbital period up went a little bit too far so I'm just gonna reduce the thrust to one one percent and I'm gonna tap away just like that just to match it exactly there you go so the orbital periods are exactly matched and what that means is they will, over the course of one orbit, their distance might vary a little bit because their orbits aren't exactly the same shape, but every orbit, the net distance between the two satellites will remain exactly the same. Now here's where I start to realize a few problems with Comsat 1 and two at this moment but two could be fixed so I'm looking at this and I'm trying to understand why comsats the contracts aren't being fulfilled as they should be So I'm just having a look at Comsat 1. Which I need to read. I think, oh yeah, maybe it's the name of it, but it's got probe written after it. Maybe that's the problem. I do the same to Comsat 2. Tracks and it's like no the orbit section still isn't complete and there's one big reason for that we will see shortly probably pretty obvious to any players that know Kerbal Space Program and it is that the inclination is way above where it should be here we go and I notice it now as comsat 1 is pretty much unmaneuverable because of the coupling that's still attached on top of the engine it makes me realize comsat 1 is useless but comsat 2 can be fixed I put into an inclination orbit that's matches the contract specifications So I'm unsetting the target from Comsat 1 because there's just no need for it. Because I understand now that it's a dead stick, effectively. And I'm going to change the 
inclination, that's the wrong way, <laughs> of Comsat 2 to get into within contract parameters. And I'm kind of trying to work out why I can get the inclination down to zero, and that's because I need to be at the right point in the orbit, basically. I'm soon going to figure out that it's just not the right place for the maneuver node. What I should do really is zoom out and then set Kerbin as target and have the approaching and descending nodes. Uh, approaching, as ascending and descending nodes. So I try and set it here and I realise, this is where I realise that it depends on what point in the orbit you're at. So I can move the maneuver node around like that. And it'll help me get it as close to zero as I can get it. trying to get it as close as possible to a circular orbit with the least amount of inclination possible I need to do more. I waste another turn of Delta V. It's not only did I waste it, obviously, going towards Comsat 1, I had to waste the equal amount getting back to a normal inclination. But I'm going to execute that node now anyway. And it's all learning, everything becomes a bit smoother and a bit easier later on. And once we have MechJeb, updated to be able to do all these maneuver plans and flight ascent and landing and so on and so forth that although it is a bit it feels a bit cheaty um, I won't be using it all the time but I will be using it some of the time to be able to you know Circularize the orbits a bit. Let's get forward to that node. Make sure the orbit's nice and circular. I 
I'm going to try and adjust the inclination a little bit more. And I realise it's probably not worth it. And Yeah. So as you can see there, Vessel Comsat 1 is done. Or well, Comsat 2 is done, even. So we don't really have to worry about that anymore. I can rename that to Comsat 1. And then we're going to skip out to the tracking center, I think. And we are going to get rid of the dead stick. Just like that. So Capcom doesn't really show the actual progress of what's going on too well. Because you have to be on the actual ship for it to register on Capcom. But I do have... I have fulfilled the mission parameters for that now, and Comsat 1 is good. So if I look at it this way, you can see the Comsat 1 is complete and now it's asking for the Comsat 2 stuff. I'm trying to work out why it's not registering on Capcom, but whatever. It's registering on the normal mission parameters. So now I'm looking at on the thing that's in orbit of the sun, trying to work out what it is. It says Comsat 1 Pro. It's like, what the hell is this? It's in an orbit trajectory of the sun. So I fly it to see what it is. And realise there's my coupling and fairing section with a few solar panels. So I'm going to get rid of it get any more science from it so it's just space junk really so comsat one is complete and now we know what we need to do we can now we understand what we need to do better. I'm focused on the moon for some reason there. There we go. So that's the first satellite in a decent-ish orbit, a flat orbit, roughly, of Kerbin, and we're ready and in a better position to put the rest of the satellites up now. Just gonna get rid of all the debris, we'll recover what we can. actually recover most of this. Yeah, that one needs to be terminated. So there's no space junk. And then we're out. Save ship. Get rid of that, keep the original. 
couple of that. And that's going to be Comsat 2. Well, it might be Comsat 2. That's where I realised them solar panels were in a useless position. So I decided to put them somewhere a bit more useful. And at least then they can be recovered once that's used. So that's it for this episode, I think. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. And come back for episode 4 where we'll continue to get this satellite system in orbit. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.